Okay. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins SIG Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are 11 June 2024. Around the virtual table, we have first uh, Demen du Portal Malsave, Mark Waite is there, Stefan Merle, Bruno Verharten, and Jay Reddy. Uh, we don't have Hervé as far as I can tell. Not sure if he's planning to join, if he's late, or if not uh, planning to join. Let's get started. Announcements. The weekly release 2.462 has successfully started. So since we changed the team meeting, uh, when we have the team meeting, we cannot see the result. It's currently building. So we'll watch it. Uh, last week, everything went fine as usual. No problem to mention about the weekly release. Um, second announcement or question. Is the meeting time good? Is there any objection uh, for keeping the meeting like this uh, at this time? Meeting time is good for me. Jay, is uh, the timing good for you as well? Cool. So let's let's write it. Then for everyone, we keep it like this. Thanks, folks. Uh, new announcements. Uh, we've received an email from Azure Automated System that reminds us that Kubernetes 1.27, the version we are using, is going to be deprecated in July. They say 15 July uh, in the email, and their documentation only mentioned the month of July, which means during this month of June, we will have to work on upgrading Kubernetes 1.28. There is a first uh, step issue to open. If no one objects, I volunteer for preparing the issue. Uh, given that I've introduced the changes uh, on the cluster, we remove other clusters. We only have Azure clusters now. Stefan just added a new one uh, this week. So if it's okay for everyone, I will prepare uh, the, the issue. And then we will see how we distribute work. And additionally, with Jane coming, that will be a, a nice case of shadowing us on the Kubernetes upgrade. So I'm going to review all the elements and see if there are elements that can be shared, split, or delegated. No objection? That did you portal to include changes from cluster two clusters or two dates order from last month. Okay, any question about Azure depreciation? So the expectation, uh, unless we have time, which I doubt for the upcoming milestone, the expectation is most probably the issue being written the changelog being superficially checked for at least a major breaking change, if any, and the kubectl command to be updated on our tools, because that one is a quick one. So, so in terms of <clears throat> that's the cluster that we're using for the majority of the ci.jenkins.io tasks, right? Or have I misunderstood? All clusters. We have three, ah. four clusters now in Azure, and we need to upgrade the fourth. Uh, I clusters. see. Okay. So so it's not just the CI that Jenkins.io nope. ephemeral agents that will be affected. It's great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Even though the CI Jenkins IO agent cluster will be the easier to upgrade. That's the oh. one with less moving pieces and that's the easiest because the easier to upgrade. Oh, that's yes. great. Because it's it, I would have guessed it's the largest volume cluster, but it's it's simplest. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because we don't use advanced features. We don't have persistent volumes. We don't have ingress controller. Uh, we have persistent volume for ACP, but that's only local volumes, not persistent. So no PV, PVC. I mean, and the usage that Jenkins does of its pods is fairly simple for agents. There is nothing magic here. So yeah, that's the easiest to upgrade. So issue to create, we'll see. And next week we should be able to have a timeline. Is that okay for you? This milestone issue, um, change log review, 
propose timeline and cube cutl scope for this milestone uh, and next we once we will have the timeline i will pro we will propose the timeline as a team and next next week we will validate the timeline or not based on availability etc okay for everyone cool um another announcement on one of our the issues completed this week, uh, the one that's one that we reopened and ref, uh, we discovered that all of the Russian ISPs are now blocking access for requests from Russian network that are going to Aachen uh, University. Uh, it looks like there is a Tor relay that has been added to the Aachen University server. And we are in a case where different countries has different views on what privacy online is, causing a lot of mayhem for all of our Russian users. We thought initially it would have been one or a few ISPs, but no, it's a centralized system uh, in front of all Russian ISPs. Yeah, which so, is not a lot different than the concept of the Great Firewall of China, right? And Tsinghua yeah. University was our solution for that. Exactly. So. Um, all Russian ISPs have blocked connection uh, to the Aachen University. So of course, the why the Aachen University is so much problematic for everyone, it's because they host for us a mirror that is considered by mirror bits uh, the closest to most of the Russia geographical IPs. So it was the mirror selected by default and they weren't able to download plugins. So we did provide a fix. We will discuss about this later, but um, new Romanian mirror opened yesterday. That should be the default for Russian users. Uh, at least we have now three users confirm that who confirm that from they had issue with Aachen and as soon as we opened the new mirror, their requests were sent to the Romanian mirror without blockers, which is good. That should help our Russian. However, uh, there were further discussion earlier today and um, a, a user mentioned there is a Yandex mirror. There is a Yandex mirror inside Russian networks. Um, I have no no recollection of this one, so I believe it's something uh, that might have been taken by uh, Olivier, you, Mark, or even Tyler, if it was older. Do you have any memory of a Yandex mirror? I no, uh, no I, I think they created the mirror themselves. I don't think any of us initiated the mirror. It really oh. was. They chose to create the mirror as a convenience for customers of Yandex. And, and that makes sense because Yandex, we've got lots of Yandex users who report issues, or we've had many Yandex issue reports, issue reports from Yandex users over the course of years. So if they're willing to let it be part of the official network, and if they can meet our requirements, then I think it'd be great to add them. Uh, there are several others like that where uh, people had been mirroring for the longest time and just hadn't bothered to tell us that they were a mirror and willing to be a mirror or weren't willing to comply with our, our, our needs that we have in order to hook them into our uh, mirror bits. Absolutely. Issue by the do so I will add an issue for that, okay? To track this work, so we will have auditing. Uh, the goal is if they say no, that's not a problem, uh, we can still continue the peer pressure like uh, I used to do with our Romanian friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I mean, if there are users and they are complaining about the blocker and the Romanian uh, mirror is not good enough. I mean, they have to find a sponsor in, inside Russia. And okay. that's cool because they that's how we get the Yandex information. But yeah, so the, the problem should be solved for Russian user, but please keep, um, keep a concern, I, I forgot the word, 
uh, have your eyes on the um, incoming issues. We might have other issues that we haven't found. And we could uh, quickly hit the limits of Ostico Romanian new mirror. So we have to be careful on that area. Right. Is there other announcement uh, for you folks? OK, let's continue with the upcoming calendar. Next week, we will have a weekly release 2.463. Uh, oh, that's the one that will require Java 17. That means we need Mark to prioritize the update of the GDK used to build the weekly. Because right now it's GDK 11. Can we build the GDK 17 minimum thing with only GDK 11? Because really no. it's GDK 11. No, no, we have to build with GDK 17. Okay, I'm not... Help me understand that one, Damien. What have I missed? I, I obviously I've missed something, and absolutely we want to be sure that we're we're able to compile with Java seventeen. Today we test with Java seventeen and with and Java twenty one. Yes, absolutely, but the the release Linux but template uses Gentrin CI infra packaging four or seven four, and that one uses GDK eleven. Ah, thank you. Okay, so this is that long, this is that problem that I've created or that I've got the responsibility for, which is in our backlog. Okay, thank you. Good. Oh, so it's, so we already have an issue for that or is it on your I whole thought, backlog? I thought, no, I thought we did. I thought it was, this isn't that, well, maybe not. Okay, mm -hmm. no, let, let me, this one, this one is certainly interesting to me. So maybe I'm confusing it, but yes, this is, the Docker packaging. Or maybe make make me a note here, Damien, yep. that we've we've got to that's that's one. Docker packaging still uses that. Are we and that's that's the Docker side. Okay. So that one thanks and that one needs needs action. Very good. And the, the question worth asking here is, uh, should we upgrade that GDK to 17 or directly to 21? Which means we would use GDK 21 to build bits that require GDK 17. Because that the, the bits will be different on what is produced by the GDK, but at least it's work and it's expected to work. And, and I think, well, I'll, I'll have to double check with, I suspect Basel will say, go with Java 21, but let me check with him because it's a good question. I, I don't know the answer. It, in either case, we will generate Java 17 bytecode because that's how it already works today, right? Today, we, we compile with Java 17 and Java 21, and we, in both cases, generate Java 11 bytecode. And that would be the same here. We would, whichever JDK we use, we will generate Java 17 bytecode. Okay, Docker packaging needs Java 11, Java 17. Good, thank you. I've been working through this and as the part of the two plus two plus two JEP, I need to be sure I'm collecting these into my list. Thank you. And, so and you say you related? work on... I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead, Stefan. Stefan, go no, ahead. No, no. I, I, I just wanted to check if it's related to the agent that we have on, on I forgot if it's trusted or, or, or released. No, it's that unrelated. We, oh, good, okay. So, no but but isn't that one also a potential issue that we've we've got to be sure that trusted.ci can, let's see, no, this, do, does release.ci have Java 17 available for it? Nope. It's okay. using Java 17 for runtime of the agent.jar process. But, but it is not. So yeah. that, that's another okay. step that's needed here to be sure that. Okay, okay. So, so this is the same container that's used for release.ci and for uh, other packaging. Yes. Okay, only, got it. It's only Jenkins core. Got release it. on package. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. There is no tools involved here. I don't know if you have tools defined on release. That's why we need to rely on the agent default Java. Okay, good. Uh, Trusted also require work to have GDK 21 available. That's the topic that Stefan mentioned, but both are unrelated in the sense that Trusted doesn't do anything with the Jenkins core release. 
Okay, good. All right. But we need both in any case. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Stefan, for pointer. So I understand, Mark, you want to work on it, or do yes. you need us to spend time on it? Oh, if if you've got time to spend on it, that would be great as well. The more people we have on this, the I think the better we'll be. I um, think that will be a nice exercise for uh, Jay, Stefan, and Hai. Uh, that's not a, a complicated one, and that can be done by Jay effectively if we guide him. That that would be great. I would love that because I've. I've got some exploration things I've got to do around the Java 17 transition. That, okay. that would be great. So that one will be priority for next week uh, because guided by uh, that uh, uh, that release. Right. Everything yeah, so... good with that? Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, no worries. We will, uh, in the issue, I will point the different elements and we will cover it tomorrow. Is that okay for you? Do not forget that we got the LTS. Yes, and? Sorry, messing right. around with packaging with the LTS tomorrow is kind of boring. Right, so, so we are unrelated again. Okay. Well, unrelated. But, but, but we won't, I doubt we'll have this pull request done in or in time to affect the LTS for tomorrow, even if they were, if they were related. This... Uh, there's more, and more work hiding here. Build artifact, deploy artifact. That's the same on almost of all of our tooling like this. We can absolutely work on building a new Docker image with new GDK and new update CLI and a new released Docker image. That's not a problem. The problem is if you update the LTS line with the Docker packaging, we, we checked this, uh, Stefan, yesterday. Remember, the Docker packaging exactly. is there to avoid having the latest version. When you do LTS from a given version, ah. the Docker packaging version stick to the version GDK that was used for that LTS because we want to maintain it across the LTS line. And I already said that was awesome and that I keep saying that. Uh, right, and well, cool. but I'm glad you said that for my benefit, Damien, because that's, that's a crucial piece because okay. cool. LTS baseline selection will choose a Java 11 baseline for the next three LTS releases. And therefore, we've yes. got to be sure that Docker packaging, as used in LTS, continues to use Java 11. While weekly, so it, we've already got oh, the separation, uh -huh. I think it was what you're telling me, right? Weekly yes. will go to Java 17. LTS for three more months will stay on Java 11. Oh, that will be a nightmare, especially with the Docker image as well. Oh, crap. Okay, well, so we've we've got to. Okay, that's another topic for that, platform. That's, and and that's a thing we need to be sure we address, right? Because we've got to allow ourselves a separation between the JDK used to build weekly as the tip of the spear and the JDK used to build LTS, the thing that has been checked chest for months to be sh before we're ready to go LTS with it. So Stick and to we GDK. drop okay. JDK seven. We drop so JDK the last JDK eleven LTS release is October October two. Okay. And then the then the first JDK seventeen LTS is October thirty. Yep. So that mean thirty, you say? Yes, thir three zero. Third, thirty. Oh, the end of month. Okay. Right. Because uh, if we have, uh, we need to keep during whole October month GDK eleven. Yes. Because if we need security issues on the previous G right. LTS line, we will need to stick to GDK eleven. Okay. We might need to do a trick, um, such as uh, define installing all GDKs or installing multiple GDKs on Docker packaging, and adding something on the release process that will start on weekly. And then we will use it on the next, the future LTS line until October. That will use an environment variable to select the major GDK. Which, we need the, we we need that kind of trick. Right, and I think that is a that is a reasonable approach. We're using it in many other places, right? So, if we if we that means we need to switch to use our all in one image or something like that. That those are reasonable choices. Yeah. Uh, that could be a solution for the Maven upgrade. <laughs> as well. If we mm. switch to the all-in-one, we will always have latest Maven on weekly releases right? and no more issues regarding uh, updating it. 
And for GDK, okay, we might have something to, to grow here. But maybe it's not that simple as I initially thought. However, uh, I believe we could, if I will want to be sure uh, that we don't break next week release. So we might need to do in two steps. The first step will be emergency and we provide GDK 17 with a new Docker packaging version. Then we decide what to do if we reinstall GDK 11 for future LTS afterwards or not. We'll see. Um, about the next LTS that happened tomorrow, as reminded by Stefan. Absolutely. Uh, so please don't break the infrastructure tomorrow. <laughs> please, Damien, don't. Okay. Uh, worth asking Chris when he when they plan to to start the release uh, timeline speaking. I'm gonna ask them. Yeah, I think ask asking Chris when the when the release starts. Now I've got a meeting with Chris uh, later today. If you if he if you don't get a response from Chris prior to. To, to say three hours from now, let me know. And Chris and I are talking about Google Summer of Code in three or four hours. So I can ask, I could ask Chris then. Yep, I've sent the question. Thank you. Um, okay. So that's all about next weekly, next LTS. Uh, next baseline selection, 26 June. So we will decide the, which release to use. Uh, Docker packaging and release process can still be updated from LTS. If we change between, let's say we select 2.463 as next baseline selection with GDK 7. Oh, no, we, no, we won't. We cannot. We must okay. select 462 or earlier. Okay, perfect. So in any case, we will have to, to be creative with the LTS process because we will need to cherry pick on each LTS and document it. Right. Okay, that will be fun. <laughs> Any question on the next weekly, next LTS or next LTS baseline? Okay, do we have announced security advisories? We don't, That's that's good. Um, I already prepared. We have two upcoming credential expirations with issue to create in the upcoming three weeks. Uh, the one in two weeks, uh, last day of June, uh, service infra service principal for infra CI will be uh, changed. Uh, so no need to have it on this milestone. So this milestone, I will create the issue and schedule it for next week. Is that okay for everyone? And same for Cloudflare API. It's in 2 July, so it's close in time. So for not for this milestone, but for the upcoming one. I I, I thought I just renewed those one, no? Yeah, two months ago. Oh gosh, time is fleeing. Yeah, time is fleeing. <laughs> so okay, so I have plenty of issues to create. Yay. <laughs> I don't have other upcoming credential and we have next major event. Thanks for the person who updated with links and stuff. That's really cool. So Bruno, you will be there. We will have also Olivier Verna as coordinator. It's in September in Austria, in Vienna precisely. And oh, DevOps World 2024. Oh, I didn't know it was uh, already planned. Uh, not planned. You can register at that location and be notified when the date okay. has been ch okay. chosen. So uh, it, it, cool. no date is yet determined, And but this is an opportunity if people want to. So if they go to that site, there's a big keep me, notify me button. If you choose that notify button, you will, you will then receive email when the dates are announced. Cool, thanks. Anything else on calendar announcements? That's nope. a lot of a lot of calendar and a lot of announcements. We're usually not this long for that. Yeah, I thought I could be quick by preparing more than usual. <laughs> Lose. Uh, cloud budget. I will go quick on the cloud budget. 
Everything is going according to the plan. That's good news. I've updated the numbers. Forecast at around 4K in the most pessimistic scenario for CDF, so that's good. Let's keep continuing. And it should be even less if uh, Stefan is able to complete his uh, infra CI task. Azure sponsorship is uh, planned is also going as uh, as planned. We are consuming almost 5K per month, so good direction. And if Stefan is able to finish his task, we will consume even more. And, and you see, I'm better to consume more than to save cash. Have you seen that? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, it's because we use the spot instances here while not here, because we cannot. That's the reason. Uh, Digital Ocean is clearly consuming almost nothing. Oh, sorry. I forgot to update this one. That's, yeah. Uh, we haven't consumed almost anything. So we have margin on Digital Ocean for the upcoming months. Finally, CloudBees, uh, we see a drastic improvement. 20% decrease of the month expected monthly cost on the forecast. Right now, uh, we have consumed 43% less than last month at the same day of the month as based from the AWS calculator. So we'll see if we can keep the 40% decrease uh, until the end of month, but we are in the right direction. Anything else about cloud budget? Mark, I'm late for letting uh, Michel know about the CDF stuff. Uh, I still need to take that action item. Uh, actually, I don't know that there's anything we need to tell Michelle. So in this case, it's all on track and she received the notice of the, I thought she also, well, I could do, I can notify her if you'd like, Damien. I certainly interact with Michelle frequently. Okay. In that case, I will take care of updating the CloudBees goals around their own account because Great. there is a whole uh, private thread about this. So I will take, I will update them. Great. So they Thank see you. things are moving in the right direction as well. Cool. So let's have a look at the task we were able to finish last milestone. Uh, a spammer as account has been blocked. Thanks Mark, thanks Alex for this one. Uh, there was an issue with the contributor spotlight website has been taken by Hervé. Thanks, Hervé, for this. Thanks, Mark, for raising the concern. I'm not sure why it was stuck. I haven't checked, but yeah, let's time, we'll see. Uh, Hervé did not add the message about reproducibility, so I assume it was something ephemeral. Uh, if the problems happen, Mark, Bruno, uh, don't hesitate to raise an issue like this one, and we'll look as soon as possible. Um, time out to... FTP at the Aachen University. So uh, that we discussed about the Russian uh, user issue uh, that has been discussed at length. As a reminder, that issue is now considered closed because we provided an alternative Romanian mirror for the Russian users. Um, that's not uh, now we can, there isn't anything else we can do. We will have a new issue about Yandex potential mirror, and a user confirm it's working for them. Thanks again, Christian from the Aachen University, because he provided so much exchanges. There are so much message on that issue that's really helpful for the Jenkins project. So thanks for sponsoring and for helping the freedom on the internet as well. <laughs> um, repository permission updater builds were stuck. It has been fixed. Uh, so we ended with a short fix on the pipeline that forces the use of GDK 21. Uh, so thanks Mark for helping me on this one and merging and finishing the work here. So it's since I think it was Wednesday or last Thursday, we are again uh, having RPU builds working properly. And that issue has been a trigger to open a bunch of issue related GDK 21. I will show them later. So the RPU part is fixed in at least five days. Thanks. Well, everyone. and and the fix that you used, I've also used for other other locations. So I just used cool. it for the pipeline steps doc generator, and seems to be working correct as well. So so the technique gives us a a, a workaround that cause, allows us to keep going in parallel. Credits due to Stefan who proposed that alternative emergency solution because he realized that. Since we are using on trusted CI virtual machines, all the GDKs are present on the agents. It's just the default Java home variable and path libraries 
that can be overridden at pipeline level. So developers always have a way to fix that, but they don't see trusted CI uh, output. So that's where the sensitive part here is because it's a private controller and it should remain. Thanks, Stefan, for taking care of the Digital Ocean P80 uh, renewal. Okay. That's why I thought that Cloudflare was uh, not long ago. I probably uh, missed uh, okay. it between Digital Ocean and Cloudflare. I'm not so so old. The time so the only issue I saw was I forgot to share the password in our encrypted uh, vault that has been fixed and you were able to do everything. So I'm not the blocker on that one anymore. That's a good news. Uh, same for the uh, Azure credential. For that one, we had a few issues. It looks like the Azure virtual machine plugin has a erratic behavior, depending on if it's sp spinning up agents, deleting them, having them marked as a candidate for deletion or using them. Uh, we don't have the same behavior between uh, one of the biggest maintainer team, Yacomb, of that plugin, and our different controller also have different behaviors, even with same config. So that means next time we have an Azure credential to renew for Azure Virtual Machines. For instance, in FraCI, we mentioned earlier on the upcoming one, we will have to perform a full controller restart at the end. So everything that Stefan did was necessary but we discovered it wasn't sufficient to have the new credential starting to work. And since the old one, in, which was in memory, was expired, we had, to, we had to wait until the end of the expiration. Restarting the controller is the only way we found that absolutely re renew the cache. Now but we know it, team, we won't be beaten. Team checked on that and said that it, it's not, it shouldn't be like that. Yes, but that's that's what we have on these two controllers. So yeah. let's uh, do a restart on that. That won't kill. I mean, the builds are queued, so the restart is quick, so there is no problem. Um, thanks, Hervé, about enabling 2FA on Jenkins CI and PM accounts. So all information are now encrypted and shared. So all of us should be able to access that account and use the shared 2FA for that. So we increase the safety of the accounts, effectively decreasing the supply chain attack. And it's shared, so no one is the bus factor here. New mirror in uh, Romania in Ostico. So we, we said, OK, that, that mirror works. So thanks for them for hosting. Uh, Mark, Bruno, should we add them to the sponsor page on Jenkins IO? Yes, yes, we should. When we when we get a new mirror, there's a there's a mirrors concept. I'm not sure that the sponsors page is the right one for it, but there's a place where we mention or list our our mirrors mirrors and mirror providers are treated differently. Buzzles got an eventual idea that we will create a a sponsors page on Jenkins.io that admits that there are tiers of sponsorship. And the Excellent. tiers of mirrors is a distinct tier of sponsorship because uh, many of the sponsors have effectively unlimited no cost bandwidth. Cool. So that means I will take care of that and mention uh, and send them an email to confirm. So they will Thanks. see they are publicly visible. Unless someone wants to take care of it instead of me, but that's a quick one. Uh, and we were able to finish on the whole thing, uh, test issues and timeouts due to combination of GDK21, memory issues, and network issues. Uh, we confirm that uh, that issue is now fixed with the recent GDK21 and changes to CI Jenkins IO. Uh, so the, I've closed the issue. We have a pull request on Jenkins core that is soon to be merged. It's related to tests. And that has been confirmed by Basil, Tim, and Mark. So the issue is considered closed on infrastructure. There is nothing else we could have done additionally here. We already did uh, everything. And finally, a uh, big uh, congratulations to Jay for his first closed issue on the Jenkins infrastructure. Uh, so Jay uh, got uh, the work that uh, Hervé tried to do with it before his holidays and Jay joining the team. And uh, so congratulations. Now CI Jenkins IO use the Jenkins classic uh, display URL link instead of Blue Ocean. 
In fact, it was already set up manually, but now it works with infrastructure as code. So congrats. Just a note, it looks like that YAML of Gcask and Puppet 6, our old version, do not use the same YAML parsing RFC. What does that mean is that if you tend to use modern YAML, you will see weird and trust me, very weird indentation. And the poor J, despite doing all the due diligence in his testing, meaning even on local virtual machine, everything was working. But yeah, in production, the YAML parser is different. So the behavior is different. So we have added comments on the Yara data file explain, hey, Magica, you need to add two more spaces than expected. And these, space, these spaces will magically disappear. And we can reproduce, but not all the time on vagrants. So magic of YAML and parsers <laughs> and the RFCs. We need and to add an engine uh, version for YAML, no? <laughs> like update CLI. No, oh, we need to either uh, upgrade to a supported version of Puppet 8. Puppet 6 is almost 10 years old, or switch to Ansible or something else. That's the, where the root cause is here. So sorry for the production issue, Jay, but welcome to the world of weird software. But again, that's really nice work and happy to have you contribute to this work. Yeah. Thank you for being part of the grimy, sometimes rough, sometimes <laughs> surprising world of real life production software. And... Um, what do we have? We have, uh... oh, okay. I have a title which is word here. Okay, I need to update the template, but other than that. Okay, we have work in progress. I don't mention the closed as not planned because that that wasn't related to infrastructure and the uh, out, out of topic. Work in progress. Right now we have top level updates Jenkins IO um, migration out from CloudBiz AWS to our new system. Uh, we are ready. We have done thoughtful texting on the update center uh, publication process. We did that as a team. Uh, I think we can still do another review, but now, Mark, we need either to have someone from the GenSec team, but I know they are really, really, really busy, or accept that since this pull request is only touching the publication part and not the generation part of the update center bits, we could take the responsibility of merging it after one or two review from the infra team and uh, follow the, the consequences of this pull request. Yeah, so so let's let's ask Gensec for their review mm -hmm. and give it a timeout so that we say, look, we understand that that if you're unable to review it, we accept that and we'll we'll proceed. Uh, that way they can make the choice which which risks they're willing to they want to handle if they delegate to us the right i think it's and... it's fair for to say hey this is low risk in this area therefore we think it's safe for you to delegate it to us yep so if it's okay for everyone i propose we for the upcoming milestone we consider we wait for them and we decide to merge it by yourself or not during next uh, team meeting. Is that okay for everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, to do. So the next steps that we can start this week though, uh, prepare performance uh, test handed over from Hervé. So we need to prepare the ground, at least to see the tooling and everything, but that one is not the most prior. We have um, prepare new update center to pull request to add Azure buckets and new R2 buckets, because the pull request here is a foundation to make these two updates. So that means we'll have three pull requests. Uh, finally, prepare work to have Puppet Managing VM for UC Mirror. So that's the proposal of Stefan, using OSU SL and in the future, eventually Digital Ocean or other cloud provider. So we need Puppet to say, hey, if I can connect in SSH to that machine, then I can apply and set up an update center. Any question? 
Hmm? So uh, expect low activity on that high prior topic for the upcoming milestone because we are blocked mainly by this one. Uh, next one, TDK21 platform wide. So that one is a consequence of the issue we had on the RPU. Uh, that's an epic top level task. And it has a lot of children which are all in triage state for now. And that might remain like this, I'm still not sure. Um, I try to list all the areas where we need to work on GDK21. Uh, we have first, on the G we have the uh, controller's runtime, the agent runtimes, the ability to provide GDK21 along with existing 11 and 17, and switching the defaults from whatever value they have today to 21, because that one can have implicit impact as well. That's why it's these are separated topics. So this one will be the top level. So we will keep it on milestone for milestone and it's mapped to a new roadmap item. Right now we have some incoming work that could be done by the team around providing Maven and GDK21. So the label Maven21 that was missing for trusted. We want to provide this to other controller. Trusted for sure, that's the problem we had last week. And as we discussed, we could add release CI soon here. So that's a matter of configuration. When we use, um, let's say, uh, container agents, whether Linux or Windows, it's easy. What we saw is that when we use Azure Virtual Machine agents, we need to cover different cases in order to use uh, GDK21. If we use inbound agent, it's easy because the script already set up a Java home and a agent Java bin. So we could already use distinct binaries and everything works at least on Linux. With SSH, we need to we need a hack, a two-line hack, but that works on Linux. Right now we have we are ready to prepare trusted cert and release CI provided Maven 21. So as such, I propose that we uh, had in the upcoming milestone, the issue about add GDK21 agent for build. We continue this issue. CI is already there and we continue on trusted and release given what we said about the upcoming release. Any like objection? That. So so the intent is on this, on this particular issue, we'll add release.ci to the checklist. Absolutely. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, epic to track all tasks. See below as first step. Uh, next issue, unless you have question. Nope. Okay. Uh, so we have a work in progress, almost finished on adding the outbound IPs uh, on what we call the data infrastructure data API. So we have that API, which is public on reports Jenkins IO. Uh, I'm gonna show you the version two built by Stefan and Hervé. That API provide the IPs of the mirrors that we are using. Um, the list of mirror is not managed dynamically, so we need to add Ostico mirror, for instance, here. Mm. And also, uh, Ostico asks if we were able to provide our outbound IP so they can restrict their AirSync server to only our IPs. That part, since we manage dynamically the resources, we can update it automatically here every day. So the goal of that issue is to have that automation. Add Ostico manually add automated outbound. The work that was done on that issue during the past milestone is a proof of concept that looks good enough based on the exchange Stefan, Hervé and I had to have each of our Terraform project to export data on each build on the main branch, public data, of course. So then we can retrieve automatically that data. Example, in order to retrieve the outbound IP, we need the Azure Net Terraform project to export the IPs of the NAT gateways because this is where our request goes uh, to the internet. So here, 
we have a project name, Azure Nets, JSON file. On each build of the Terraform project, that file is updated automatically by the pipeline if it succeeds. And so here we have public and non-sensitive information about the outbound IP of each of the services. The content of this JSON file can change at any moment. There is no guarantee, but we are the consumer. That's a way for us to have a public centralized area with up-to-date information. So now the next step is to update the script generating the infrastructure API here and add the outbound IP on the service get Jenkins IO next to mirrors. And then we can tell Ostico, hey, here is our IP and contact all of the other mirror provider as well if needed. Is it clear? Does it make sense? And do you have any question or things to clarify? Makes sense to me. The new Terraform report export. Okay, a streamlined Maven version across the infrastructure. So no work done on this one. Uh, uh, let's prioritize the GDK upgrade instead for weekly 2.46 uh, free. So yes. I will move this one later. Uh, maybe we can do both at the same time. I'm still not sure, Mark because at least we know we will have some kind of Mayhem Tuesday. So if we know we have Mayhem, better to have all the Mayhem at once, right? <laughs> well, but but actually, I'm, I think I'm the other direction on that when we know that our Maven versions right now are at least okay, right? Whereas we know that Java, the Java change we've got to make. So I'd rather, I'm okay if you find it convenient to do it at the same time, I don't object, but but for me, the worry was we've got the Java changes are larger and more likely to surprise us than the Maven changes are, right? Maven version changes are mm -hmm. relatively minor going from 396 to 397. In one case, maybe from 386 to 397, still not a, not a huge change. Okay. I, but I'm okay with either. If if the team feels like, hey, we can make the change from Aven, that's great. It's just, it's it's less important, I think, to me than the Java Java 17 availability. Okay, so we focus on GDK and we see if Maven is an easy one or not. Right. No objection. Mm. Um, Stefan, can you give us a status on the storage? Uh migration for weekly release and infra? Um, I'm stuck right now because of a point. I'm not really sure why, but the the temporary pod that I want to use to um, try the migration and to time the migration of data between the two volumes um, cannot mount both uh, uh, volume at the oh. same time on the same pod. So we we we're, we're playing around with uh, 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 not affinity pod affinity, and now I will switch and and play around with not selection to make sure that my temporary pod is spawn on the same node as the weekly one, and uh, make sure that it can mount the volume. The problem is that I'm not sure I can mount the pod. So I'm 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 in that way right now. But that that went in the backlog uh, versus okay. the other one. The last the error message you shared is because uh, the pod clearly didn't have the toleration. So your uh, your initial pod level affinity looks like it was trying to pick the same node as weekly, but without the proper toleration to allow it to run an IRM64 it says no candidates because you have a taint on these nodes. Yeah. I've, Selector I've should some. do the same, uh, but affinities, uh, affinities says uh, start me on the same node as weekly CI, so it's pod level, while Selector says start me on that node. So you need to retrieve the node name, which can change over time, of course. However, I propose that you start simply with a combination of Selector and Toleration. 
selector on the node. Can spawn on so this exactly. So you remove the affinity moving part for now because we never played with affinity until today. And you check that first the toleration allows the pod to be scheduled. Agreed. Good for you? Yep. And then you can move on affinity, of course. But it's a matter of time. And as we say, that's the less prior or not, it's not the most important task. So cool. So let's take our time on this one if needed. Uh, because the important one is spending new money. Oh, no, that's spending cool. money, of course. <laughs> What's the status? So this one, the cluster was created um, so that we got a new cluster that uh, aimed to handle all, some, not all, all the agent for Infra CI on the sponsored subscription, um, meaning not spot instances. And um, and I did create it this morning to not pool dedicated for the agents, one in Intel uh, 86 and one in IRM ARM, sorry, 64. And two minutes before that meeting, I created a pull request for the, the oh, sorry, the, the secret token as your credential, there's a name, service principle. So so I'm, and after that, I would have to work on the Kubernetes uh, oh. usage of that. Cluster. Service account, okay. Service, service account. account, so yeah. So adding the cluster under Kubernetes management. Perfect. Cool. Good news. Good Almost job. Almost there. Almost there. So that's all for the work in progress. Let's have a look at the new issues. Um, so as we discussed, unless someone object, I will keep triage to all the GDK21, except the GDK uh, the HAD21 build. So that one should be without triage because we are working on it and it's on the uh, new milestone. Um, I propose you, your eyes not stick on the GDK21 triage issue and we immediately move to, uh, there is a GSOC issue and cannot publish my plugin anymore. Let's start with the GSOC project. I see that Hervé self assign himself. So I'm gonna add him uh, and remove the triage, I'm not sure. And we'll need help migrating repository. Okay, so that's just a GitHub migration of repositories. So yeah, I believe Hervé should be able to do that without any problem. I will ask him to report though, just to be sure. Add Hervé. Um, and finally, we had the new issue. We have a contributor, maintainer of a plugin, who is having issue when trying to release the new version. Uh, looks like there are, Mark, we might need help or Bruno. It looks like their uh, repository is trying to use incrementals to retrieve the Maven HPI plugin. They confirm they don't have a proxy on settings XML, which used to be the cause of uh, inverting. So I'm not sure where to go from here. Um... Okay, yeah, let's let's we'll we'll take it up. Um, I, it needs needs uh, because I before our meeting today, I tried to build this plugin locally and it built just fine for me. So okay. so I don't know what's different about theirs. I think it will need someone outside the infra team to help. So okay. yeah, let's let's take it on. Uh, if you'd like, you can. Put it to me or, yeah, put it to me for now. Okay, proposal, I just do one last back and forth with them, okay. telling them to clean their local Maven cache or at least remove it temporarily to see if they have the same behavior. So I want them to retry from scratch. Uh, I wanted to try the plugin like you did. So if you say that it worked for, for you, either with your cache or from uh, anti mine was Mine was with my cache. So I, I absolutely okay. was using my cache, but with my cache, it it gave no complaints, no error messages, nothing. It would just okay. built fine. Okay, so um, it's because I believe you already have that version of the Maven HPI plugin or your cache. So if it's okay, I'm gonna try from scratch because I don't have Maven cache and ask them if it work on my machine, I will ask them to clean up theirs and retest. If it's not working, I will ask your help, Mark and Bruno on this one. Great. 
One of the solution could be having them upgrading their POM XML, but I believe they want to do the release right now, which will work. So there is something weird here. Mm. So I mentioned it for awareness, but a well noted mark if I cannot find a quick solution on this one. Okay. Uh, that's all for me on all the issues. Do you have other topics or issues you want to add? One last try and then mark. Escalate to mark if no solution. Okay, no other issues. No problem on here. Okay, uh, just one last thing. Uh, thanks, Mark, for the roadmap and the world board meeting. So the Jenkins roadmap is now showing the top level topics we have for the infrastructure with the current work in progress. So congrats on the work done. And don't hesitate if you see other high level topics such as GDK21. That's all for me. Anything else? Okay, so I'm stopping screen share. And for everyone, see you next week if you are looking at the recording or see you later for the team members. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.